In this series, I'm going to look at some of the ideas which get thrown around within the psychedelic discourse and try and unpack them through a rational lens without the woo-woo or pseudoscience. Now, I'm not claiming that I've got all the answers or that there isn't more to these concepts that is worth exploring, but simply that they aren't the kind of fundamental truths or unsolvable mystery paradoxes that people often claim that they are. So, with all that in mind, let's kick things off with Reality is an illusion. I just recently watched the Netflix documentary called Have a Good Trip, and it features a host of celebrities talking about their own psychedelic experiences. And it was actually really funny, and it contains such amusing anecdotes as... No lie, a rainbow shot out of my dick. And it had a sound with it, like... Now, you know it's a strange world we live in when someone on TV can say, a rainbow shot out of my dick. And I'm just sat there thinking, yeah, man, I can so relate to that. Anyway, the reason I mention this is because one of the featured speakers was the grandmaster of quantum mystical bullshit, Deepak Chopra, who was doing a section on the topic of reality is an illusion. Let's see what Deepak has to say about it. The real world is a radically ambiguous and ceaselessly flowing quantum soup. It's a fluctuation of energy and information in an infinite void. The sky that an insect sees is not the sky you and I see. A uh, honeybee experiences um, ultraviolet uh, radiation. I have no idea what that looks like, you know? So when a honeybee looks at a flower, it doesn't see a flower the way you and I see, although it can sense honey from a distance. A snake experiences infrared radiation. A bat experiences the echo of ultrasound. A chameleon's eyeball swivel on two different axes. You can't even remotely imagine what this would look like to a chameleon. So what's reality? And the answer is, there's no such thing. What Deepak says in that clip isn't particularly unique to him. And I've seen many quantum mystical guru types repeat this same logical fallacy. So let's try and unpack his core argument, which I think we could reasonably summarize as the following. There is more to reality than what we as humans can perceive. Therefore, reality itself is an illusion. Now the first part of that argument is undoubtedly true, but the second part, as a logical outcome of the first, is complete nonsense. So let's start with that first chunk and get the ball rolling with the definition of reality. Reality is the state of things as they actually exist, as opposed to the idealistic or notional idea of them. I think most of us would happily agree that reality is what is there, regardless of how we perceive it, or whether we are even aware of it. You know, for example, I was affected by gravity long before I understood it as a fundamental force within the universe. Likewise, if someone throws this rock at my head, then the reality of the rock is going to become painfully obvious to me. You know, I might have been completely unaware that someone threw it and I had no knowledge of the speed or trajectory that it was on. And maybe I didn't even have a linguistic word for rock. None of that matters. Whatever it is, it, in this case the rock, is going to collide with my melon head and cause me some distress. So we can see that reality happens independent of me whether I witness it or not. Now, just because there are different manners in which reality can be perceived doesn't make the entire thing an illusion. Because as we just discussed, reality doesn't occur if you witness it at all. So let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater just so that we can talk some metaphysical bullshit. To try and make his point, Deepak references a few creatures which have vastly different senses to our own, like a bat, which navigates via echolocation, and a honeybee, which uses ultraviolet light. If they perceive the world differently than us, then there is no consensus on what reality is. Therefore, reality must be an illusion. Right? Well, no. Because the consensus is that there is a thing there to be perceived via whatever tools we have to perceive it. We are simply seeing the same underlying structure in a different way. You see, myself, the bat, and the bee will interact with this rock in a similar manner, irrespective of how we perceive it. 
you know, we might ignore it or move around it or get out of the way if someone throws it at us. But we all recognize that there is a thing there. So to say it's an illusion is complete bollocks. Often in conversations like this, then the next spooky card that gets played is to talk about how when we get down to the atomic level, then the rock is actually mostly just empty space. And that if the rock is empty space, then nothing is real. And again, no. I mean, what we're talking about here is a perspective of scale. You know, I'm a human being and I can walk through this door because the door and I are on a compatible proportional scale. But if I try and mash a blue whale through this door, then it's gonna encounter some problems because the door hasn't been made with the whale in mind. And so it just smashes its face up against a very solid surrounding wall. Whereas I pass through the empty space because you know, scale. Likewise, the same principle applies to the rock and subatomic particles. There is lots of empty space within the rock because subatomic particles are really small. But it doesn't seem like that to me or the whale because we are much bigger. I mean, is this really that much of an enigma? Small things are small, so they have a different perspective and interaction with reality than big things, which are big. I think what Deepak is doing here is something that's very common within psychedelic culture, which is taking a truthful statement, which has a little bit of mystery, and then using that as a launch pad into full blown woo woo, which they then try and pass off as a fundamental truth. The trick is to make the first part so obvious that you can only agree with it. And then with a little bit of linguistic bamboozling, they make the leap that the second part must therefore also be true. Now, the only thing that the example of the bat and the bee proves is that there are many different ways of perceiving reality. And like I said, that is absolutely true. There is no doubt that there are ways of seeing the world that are beyond our current comprehension. And we certainly get a glimpse of that when we use psychedelics, where an entirely new states of consciousness become available. But even those new states of consciousness are still happening within the bounds of reality. There is nothing unreality about having a psychedelic experience. If anything, it's more reality. It feels more real than real because it kind of is. Suddenly we get to experience creation through this explosion of hyper-consciousness. And whether you believe it's happening purely inside your own head or in some pocket dimension of blag on delta waves, then it's still happening within reality. And while that experience is unfolding in the psychedelic realm, then your physical body is still here waiting for you to return, possibly being watched over by a friendly bat and honeybee. These different perceptions of reality are not exclusive and they certainly don't invalidate each other. They actually stack on top of each other to reveal the vast nature of reality. And since we know about things like electromagnetic radiation and subatomic particles, then it's completely uncontroversial to say that our human experience is the tiniest little slice of what reality has to offer. And accepting that doesn't mean that our reality isn't real. It absolutely is. You know, if there was some imaginary spectrum of total experience, then each different perspective builds up the full picture. They accumulate to collectively give us the full experience. Now, no one piece of the spectrum is the full truth and none of it invalidates the individual slices. I mean, can you just imagine a bee telling a bat that just because it has a different perspective on how the world looks, that its reality is an illusion? Wouldn't that bee just sound like a complete knob? But what about simulation theory? Doesn't that prove that everything is an illusion? Well, no, because even if we are in a simulation, then that is our reality. The rules of the simulation work in exactly the same way as the rules of reality. So whether it's a simulation or not, we are in it. And that is that. You know, the guy in the video game is in that simulation. There is no framework where he can exist outside of it. And it would be the same for us. For the duration of our human existence, we are a product of this universe or this simulation. I think part of the problem is that we as human beings are always trying to have dominion over everything. And in the case of Deepak Chopra and other guru types, 
They assert that dominion by making things sound spookier than they are, and then positioning themselves as the ruler of spooky tone with all the answers. But the need for there to be a spooky tone is itself an illusion. As we've already just discussed, reality just happens. It's happening all around us right now. It doesn't matter how spooky we try and make it sound. It literally gives no fucks. Now, I want to be clear that I'm not arguing for some dry reductionist view of the world. Quite the opposite. And if you pay attention to what I'm saying, and what I've been saying for a long time on my channel, that I am fully acknowledging that there are insane possibilities for experience beyond that which human beings can normally comprehend. And like I said, we get a taste of that whenever we take psychedelics. Reality, for us, is incomprehensible in its vastness and its scope. It encapsulates everything from the quantum level up to the size of supermassive black holes. And these are scales which we just aren't evolved to deal with. But the things that exist at those scales are real, and we are real. It's all real. Now a lot of this is just word games. Our perception of reality isn't an illusion. It would be more accurate to describe it as a model that is created and filtered by our brains based on our sensory inputs. But it's a model of something that is there. You know, just like what we see in the video game is a model generated from the underlying code, what we perceive as reality is modeled from the patterns and the waveforms that our senses detect around us. And that's the underlying truth, is that there is something there to be modeled and for us to make sense of. The bat's model is different to the bee's model, which in turn is different to my model. So yeah, all these models are different and so what? Anyway, I think that's enough unpacking of my take on reality is an illusion. I hope you found it useful and if there's any topics you want me to cover as part of this series, then leave me a comment below and I'll see what I can do. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, then consider becoming a patron of the show like these awesome people. The money I receive, it goes towards new equipment, artwork that I use in my videos, and it pays the wages of my trusty driver, Terence McKenna. It's a pleasure to be here. Another way you could be part of our community of rational psychonauts is to join our Discord server, which is a woo-free zone, and come and say hello. But for now, that's it. I'll see you next time on Adeptus Psychonautica. Mm.